Hi Bobcats, in this video we're going to continue our study of titrations. In particular we're going to look at weak acids titrated with strong bases. Our objectives include calculating the pH at different uh, places along the titration curves and also to compare and contrast the uh, shapes of the titration curves of weak acids and weak bases. As a specific example, let's look at the titration of uh, hydrofluoric acid, which is a weak acid with the strong base NaOH. Um, the, when HF reacts with NaOH, it makes sodium fluoride, a salt, plus water. And the um, important thing here is that sodium fluoride is a salt formed by a strong base and a weak acid, which means it is a basic salt. So the equivalence point is going to have a basic pH, right? We're making a basic salt. Um, and so when we hit the equivalence point, um, we're going to be at a pH that is bigger than 7. That's a big difference compared to the strong acid, strong base titration curve, which makes a neutral salt and has an equivalence point at a pH of 7. Um, and the reason that the pH gets elevated above 7 is that that salt sets up an equilibrium. So the fluoride ion will react with water in that hydrolysis reaction to produce uh, HF and OH minus. And so those OH minus ions that are liberated um, make the equivalence point here a little bit basic. Just like with our strong acid, strong base curve, we can think of um, the titration curve as being separated into four distinct regions. At the very, very beginning, when you have just acid in your Erlenmeyer flask, um, no base has been added yet. This becomes um, a calculation of the pH of a weak acid because that's all that's down there in your flask. So you have to set up your ice chart. Um, X will be equal to the square root of Ka times your initial acid concentration, and then from X you can find pH. Um, if you look in between where we start and the equivalence point, um, on this graph that's labeled region B. In this region, we have a mixture of chemicals. We are going to have the weak acid, HA, that has not yet been neutralized by the added base. And then we will also have this salt, which contains the conjugate base. So region B here contains a mixture of a weak acid and a conjugate base, which is what we call a buffer. And um, so in this region, you can set up your ICF chart to calculate the reaction stoichiometry and see how much HA is left over. Um, and this time around, we also need to, if you set up that ICF chart, you also need to consider how much that conjugate base has been formed. And then to calculate the pH, you have to consider that you have both HA and A minus present and use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. But something really interesting happening at the halfway point, because at the halfway titration point, uh, pH will be equal to pKa. What I mean by the halfway titration point is, um, let's see, this equivalence point occurs at this volume, which is not labeled. Let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five squares over. And so if we go instead of five squares over from the origin, if we go two and a half squares over, we would be at this point here. And at that point, um, what we call the halfway point, pH will be equal to pKa. And the reason for that is that half of your acid has been converted to salt. When you look at the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, that ratio of the conjugate base over the conjugate acid, well, if the acid and the base have equal concentrations, the ratio becomes 1. The log of 1 is 0, and so the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation reduces to pH equals pKa. 
Now, once you're at the equivalence point, we're going to have, whoops, here's a typo. That is not an acidic salt calculation. Um, that is going to be a basic salt calculation. Uh, we did those at the, towards the end of chapter 16. Um, and again, to figure out exactly where that equivalence point is, you may need to use this uh, equation, uh, N sub A, M sub A, V sub A is equal to N sub B, M sub B, V sub B. And then once we get past the equivalence point, the region is labeled D on this um, uh, diagram, on this curve. Um, what we need to consider is that all of the acid has been neutralized, and now we've added excess base. So we just need to figure out how much base is in excess and how much that has been diluted by combining the two solutions, and that will tell us um, how to calculate the pH. But just like with the strong acid, strong base, it's really important before you jump into doing any of these calculations that you figure out where you are. Are you before the equivalence point? Are you at the equivalence point or are you past the equivalence point? This diagram allows us to compare the um, pH titration curves from a variety of weak acids uh, versus a strong acid. In all three of these curves, the concentration of the acid is one molar. Uh, whoops, no, that's not quite right. The concentration of the acid is going to be 0.1 molar. And I know that because the strong acid starts at a pH of 1. If the pH of your strong acid is 1, then the molarity will be 0.1. Um, the thing to notice about these curves is that um, the weaker your acid, the higher the pH will be at the beginning. Um, because uh, weaker acids mean they ionize less, which means you have less hydrogen ion. Less hydrogen ion means a higher pH. And because they're starting out at a higher pH, um, they are going to have a much flatter curve and there won't be as huge of a jump at the equivalence point. And also notice that the smaller the Ka, the weaker the acid, the more basic the equivalence point is. So the strong acid had an equivalence point at 7. The um, acid with the 10 to the minus 4 Ka has an equivalence point that's a little over 8. And then the Ka value of 10 to the minus 8 is actually a little bit over 10 for the pH. So the uh, shape of these curves can tell us a little bit about the Ka of the acid or vice versa. In this example, we have a 0 0.03 molar solution of benzoic acid with a Ka of 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5. And let's see, it has a volume of 50 milliliters and it's titrated with 0 0.015 molar sodium hydroxide. So this is a weak acid, benzoic acid, titrated with a strong base, sodium hydroxide. So weak acid titrated with a strong base. So that means we are going to have a basic salt. And so the equivalence point um, is going to be bigger than 7. Then we're asked to, or that the pH at the equivalence point will be bigger than 7. And we're asked to calculate the PA, pH after 50 mils of base have been added and after 100 mils of base have been added. Okay, so um, here's what we need to do. First of all, we need to figure out if these values of 50 mils and 100 mils of base are before, at, or past the equivalence point, because we approach those calculations a little bit differently. Um, so to figure out our, our equivalence point, we need the titration equation. And at the equivalence point, the moles of H plus added from the base are equal to the moles of O8. I'm sorry. Whew, I am saying things all wrong today. The moles of H plus that come from the acid will be equal to the moles of OH minus that have been added from the base. Let me figure out the moles of H plus by taking N sub A, which is the subscript on hydrogen in the acid. 
times m sub a, the molarity of the acid, and v sub a, the volume of the acid. And that will be equal to n sub b, the subscript on hydroxide in the base, times the molarity of the base and the volume of the base. All right, so N sub A, benzoic acid, it has a single acidic proton out here at front, so N sub A is 1. The molarity of the benzoic acid was 0 0.03. Again, I'm being a little sloppy here on significant figures. It looks like both of our molarities have two sig figs. Um, all of these volumes are being measured like with a burette, so we've got uh, two decimal places which give us four sig figs on our volumes. Um, the volume of the acid is 50 mils, and then N sub B, well sodium hydroxide has one hydroxide per formula unit, the molarity is 0 0.015, which is half as much as the acid, and then the volume of the base is what we're looking for, trying to figure out how much was added to reach that equivalence point. So let's see, on the right hand side I have 1 times 0.015, which is just 1, so I need to divide both sides by that. So I'll have uh, 0.03 times 50 divided by 0.015 to give me V sub B, and so 100 milliliters will be equal to the volume of base added in order to reach that equivalence point. So that tells us in part A, we are halfway to that equivalence point, and in part B, we are all the way at the equivalence point.